Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and today's subject we're going to be talking about is these central heating magnetic filters. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the different makes and models, we're going to look at how they work and we're also going to look at how we install one. So let's get on with the show. So let's look at the science of these filters. Basically, what we've got in here is some dirty central heating water. Because of electrolysis and poor installation of a system, we've got what's called magnetite. Magnetite is basically the metal from the system. So the metal in the radiators and all the other metal deposits we've got floating around. So, as you can see, dirty system water. So, we come along with a magnet. Okay, so this is just a big, huge magnet. So we slide the magnet in, and if by magic, while we're twisting it around, we're going to get clean central heating water. One of the major players in the filter industry is um, Phenox. Fernox don't just make filters, they also make the chemicals to protect our system. So they make cleaners and they make inhibitors. We'll talk about those later. Now, one of the things what these do is what's called hydroclonic um, technology, action. So basically, as well as the magnet being in there, it also spins the water around to collect the sediment at the bottom. And you can just see some sediment at the bottom. Because that's your magnet there, collected all the dust, uh, all the dust, all the magnetite, and then all the debris has fallen at the bottom, and we will be able to blow that around. So if I take the magnet out of this one, so we can now see all the magnetite floating around in there. Again, we stick the powerful magnet in there, and hey presto, within a few seconds, the heating system is clean. So that's the one of the major players, Fernox. Founded in 1964 by Peter Mertzel, a German chemist who settled in Britain, Fernox, short for ferrous non-oxidus, a Latin name for the process of iron corrosion, was the world's first water treatment company formed in response to the growing number of the wet central heating systems installed in UK homes and businesses. I would say the biggest player in the central heating filter industry is ADIC, started by a, a guy called Chris Aidy in 2003. He was the guy who, in his shed at home with his wife, invented this little puppy, the, uh, the actual filter. And they've gone on to strength to strength to, uh, to, to, to be a game changer. The, the new one even uh, it can be connected to the internet and, and warn you of any problems and that's the filter we're going to be installing on site. Uh, they reckon it saves about 6% on your fuel bill and 225,000 tonnes of CO2 per year. So everybody should have one of these filters installed um, in their, on their central heating system to protect it. So this is the, the box it comes in and what we're going to do now is I've already installed one of these on, on the boiler in the centre so we're going to have a look at how, um, how we open it and, and the stuff we need so let's go and have a look. So this is the filter we're going to be looking at. This is the RD Micro. This will be installed on the smaller heating systems. So your flats, your smaller properties. Um, so what we're going to have to do is have a closer look at this. We're going to uh, take the filter out, we're going to have a look. So let's get on with it. Now, this is the close up now of the filter we're going to be looking at, this AD filter. First thing we're going to do is, these are the isolation valves to isolate us on the return. So this is actually installed on the return pipe of this valent combi boiler. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to isolate the valves to be able to open the top. So we need the special key to be able to do that. So that's the key and we're going to turn off. So you will see it says on there and if I turn the valve you can now see it's off and you can see 
the valve is actually now running with the flow of the pipe to indicate it's off. And now do the one at the top again. So you can see both valves are in the off position. Now we've isolated the valves. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a bleed key just to open the top just to make sure these two valves aren't passing. So just crack it open. Got a little bit of water running out there. I have got a bucket. Can I see anything what's falling now? Okay, so has it stopped? Looks like it. So I'm now going to use the bigger spanner what comes in the kit. I'm going to put that on the bottle and just under. Okay, so I'm now going to take, be careful not when taking it off, just make sure water doesn't come gushing out everywhere. And now we can see. This is collected. Drop it all into the bowl below. Okay. You can now see that has actually collected some magnetite off the system. Now we're at the kitchen sink now to clean off this magnetite from the filter. So you can see the magnetite on there. First thing we need to do is actually remove the magnet. So if we just pull it off. And you can see now that's the magnet. Okay, clean that in a minute. So we've now got this magnetite on the body. We're just going to use a bit of water to wash it off. So get a bit of paper towel. From our handy paper towel dispenser to wash off the excess. Make it nice and clean. So that looks a little bit cleaner now. So in the bottom here is a debris capture. So this collects the non-magnetic -magnet stuff. We've got a little lock on the bottom here so we can take that off and pull it out. So we can now push that out. We can now put it back together. We can now put it back together. We can now use this paper towel to wipe off any excess from the magnet itself. Check whether the sink is stainless steel. Oh, look at that, it is. That's brass. We're all right. Together, give it a bit of a wipe. Get rid of any residual magnetite. So you can see the O ring inside there is very, very important. So we can just check and make sure that that's still going to seal and that the threads have not been crossed and everything looks ticky to do. Good job. So before we put the actual magnet back into the body, what I want to do is I want to dose some inhibitor in there. So we're using inhibitor to inhibit corrosion. So this will stop the chemical reaction and the electrical reaction between your copper and your brass and your, your steel and your pumps and your radiators. So first of all, I need to get the water out of there. Now some of the um, filters actually have a drain on the bottom to make this easier, but I've got to use a dirty old towel. So I'm just going to put it in to the water, being careful not to Got it all squash out over the top. There it goes. Catch it in the bucket. Pull it out. Right, rinse it out. Pull it down into the bottom again. Make 
show I've got it all. Okay. So, now what I can do is I can dose our inhibitor in. So this is our inhibitor. I'm going to put it in. Now, it doesn't actually take all this. This is 500 millilitres. It won't actually take all of this. So let's just pour it in. To get near the top. That should be enough. And now I'm slowly going to lower the filter back in. too much of the chemical. I've still got the vent open here so it allows any air what's trapped in the system to come out. So I've got the valves obviously shut here. You can hear the air coming out now. I'm going to use the spanner just to tighten it up a little bit. So again you can still hear the air coming out. Give it a bit of wipe. Now I'm going to cut and shut the vent. I'm just going to open the valves using the little tool again. This time it will say on on the valves. And set on. And I should be able to take this with my fingers now. So the two valves are now on. I can now bleed the top. Until we get water coming out. There's the air. So we just bled the top now, wipe off the excess, give it a final wipe and it's now ready for being back in action. So on the bottle now we have a little sticker, this sticker says the inhibitor and date added. We can now stick this sticker onto the appliance, onto the boiler and that will tell any future engineers when it was added. If your radiator is hot at the top but cold at the bottom, then you've got sludge in your system. But if your radiator is hot at the bottom and cold at the top, then you've got air in your radiator. So, before we go on to the video for the installation of one of these magnetic filters, just want to have a look at this. So this is the new Trapex. This is brand new, this is actually a prototype which Trapex have sent us. Um, this is actually not on the market until April 2019. So while I'm filming this, next month. So let's have a look at it closely. So this is all brass construction. So you can see it's all brass. Even the isolation valves, you can see there all this part of the body is cast in one. So do they move? Oh yeah, they move quite easily. Again, we've got the on and off written on them, if you can see that. Okay. So let's have a, it's got a drain at the bottom. But I like this, this, this is, uh, this twists in any direction you want it. So if your pipe work was horizontal instead of vertical. We've still we've got a flow arrow to show you which way the direction goes. So depending on which way, whether you're doing it on the flow or the return. Now these really should always go on the return because these need to protect the boiler, not the pipework. So I have seen them on the flow and technically could you put them on the flow? Yeah, but it's not, well you could on a sealed system, on a vented system you couldn't. So if you had a vented central heating system, this would have to go on the return, okay, because the vent pipe, safety device, okay, now on a sealed system, because most of the boilers have got the pressure relief valve in the boiler itself, and that would be protected if you turn these valves off, okay, so this should always be done on the return, I would always advise everybody to install the, the magnetic filters on the return, because like I say, you need to protect it there for the boiler, really, okay, so... As you can see from the diagram, they can go on the flow as long as they are after the vent on an open vented system. One of the things I have just noticed about this brand new uh, filter is when I laid it on the table, how flat it goes back to the wall. 
Look at that. So it's actually milled on the back, so it would actually go really flat against the wall. Where a lot of filters struggle to get flat against the wall. So yeah, there's another plus for this filter. So let's let's take it apart. Let's have a look inside it. Okay. So let's go and do this nut here. Mm. He says. To the prototype, to the brand new. Okay, so let's strip it. Ooh. I don't know whether you can see that, but can you see that? There is an O-ring inside there. And there's also two O-rings. You can see that on there, on that part there. It's also a directional um, bit here for some reason. It's obviously it's deflecting it down. Okay, so we've got three O-rings, so that must be to stop it leaking. It certainly puts a seal on it, it could get the nut off. Okay. So. Yeah, I like the way that spins around, the way we can do that. So let's get this magnet out and have a look. Okay, so there's the magnet. Actually feels... like the magnet's working when you put it in. So there must be some steel inside there. Now, as I was saying on the video, while we were, were draining the uh, the other filter, we could have done with a drain, but this one has a drain. So this would be easy to drain. So we've even got a little cap there, just in case the, somebody accidentally opens the valve. So this is the Trapex Centromag Genesis um, effective magnetic central heating filtration brand new this is going to be brand new on the market okay I quite like it I, I like the way it feels it's heavy it's uh, it's 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 not made of plastic okay plastic Ooh. no it's made of made of brass okay so uh, yeah I think that could be a quality piece okay only time will tell how good it is so we might get an install on this and then see how it goes. So that's the new um, Trapex filter about to be released to the world. Why don't you have a look? You've just completed part one of this two part video on these central heating magnetic filters. So. Uh, part two is coming up and it's all about the installation of one of these, okay? But if you've enjoyed this video, why don't you give us a thumbs up or go down into the comment section and leave us a constructive comment. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, why not? And if you will hit that notification bell when we send out a video on Wednesdays, you will get the notification. So, can't wait for number two, let's get on with it.